Shalom again. Walking in from the south here at Tel Afek, and what we're looking at is really some of the ruins and the remains of what Herod did, and that's Herod of the Christmas story, because he remodeled this place and he renamed it Antipatris after his dad. His dad's name was Antipater. And so here's Herod coming in here and declaring to the world his worldview. He's coming on the Via Maris and basically saying, look at the glory of myself, look at the glory of my father. You can actually see on the Via Maris here some of the cart tracks. Right in here, a little bit further in here, you can see the indentations, especially right in here and then a little bit further down as well. In terms of all the thousands, just think of the people who travel this road. Alexander the Great probably was here. The Pharaohs were here. The Canaanites were here. The Philistines. Um, Paul was here, uh, obviously, when he was on his way to trial at uh, uh, Caesarea Maritima, further up here. As we pan across this way, come this way a little bit. As we come into this area, more of the city, back over here is the forum and the shopping area, and back over here is actually a, a Roman home, or a home that would have been uh, in that time, in that time period. Now what's interesting here, and I think the faith lesson that really comes out to me is this. God places his people his people here in Israel. He places them on the Via Maris. Before Herod, before all of them, the Via Maris was here. And when we take a look at the Bible verses, matter of fact, I'm going to go to Isaiah 42, verse 6. So God brings his people, the Hebrews, he plants them here on the Via Maris where the entire world has to go through, right on this road, all the way from Egypt, all the way to Assyria and Babylon. And basically, he has a purpose for them. His purpose is, I am the Lord. This is Isaiah 42, 6. I am the Lord, and I have called you, meaning Israel, in righteousness. I will also hold you by the hand and watch over you. And I will appoint you as a covenant to the people, as a light to the nations. So indeed, the Lord has got a very clear purpose for his people. A light to the nations as the people travel that via Maris. In, verse, in Isaiah 49, verse 6, we read, he says, Is it too small a thing that you should be my servant? to raise up the tribes of Jacob, and to restore the preserved ones of Israel. I will also make you a light of the nations, so that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. Amazing. God is planting his people here, so that all the nations of the world will come here, interact with the Hebrew people who are going to be a light to the nations, and to bring God's salvation to the ends of the earth. What's interesting to me, is Jesus seems to carry that message further along. We know he said that, Jesus said this in John 8, I am the light of the world. Now, he is referring, and every Jew at that time would have remembered, the, 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 the verses in Isaiah. So when Jesus says, I'm the light of the world, and talking about coming to Jesus, coming to him as the light of the world to bring the salvation, the salvation of God to all the nations, Jesus is really personifying himself that way. But then he says something remarkable in the Sermon on the Mount. And he says, we, we who are followers of Yeshua, we who are followers of Jesus are lights of the world. And that refers back to Isaiah again. So when people meet us, we have that same purpose. And that purpose has not changed. And in terms of the Via Maris of our lives, whether it's a Via Maris like this, or wherever we live in the world, our purpose, obviously, is to bring the salvation of the Lord to all the nations. I find this interesting in Revelation. Book of Revelation. Jesus is saying, 
to the church of Ephesus. And he says, I am the one who holds the seven stars in his right hand and the one who walks among the seven golden lampstands. Now, when we read that, when you take the English word lampstands, take it to the Greek, and the Greek back to the Hebrew, it's the seven golden menorahs. And the Jewish people looked upon the menorah as a symbol of God, as a symbol of the light of the world. It wasn't the light of the world, but as a symbol, as a symbol of Israel. It was a symbol of those verses that we actually took a look at in Isaiah 42 and in Isaiah 49. Jesus says, I'm the light of the world. And then he says, you're the light of the world. So all of a sudden, we get a picture of being menorahs. So in Revelation chapter 1, verse 20, As for the mystery of the seven stars, which you saw in my right hand, and the seven golden lampstands, the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven lampstands are the seven churches. The seven menorahs represent the church. And it's awesome because Jesus is using that same image all the way back to Isaiah, saying that indeed we are lights of the world to bring the salvation, to bring Jesus to the ends of the earth, to bring his salvation to all the nations. Herod tried it. He tried it right here at Afek. He's basically saying, look at me, look at my glory, look at my power. But the thing is, it's not by rocks and stones. That's all that's left of Herod. So for us, when we think about our lives today, and we think about the Via Maris that we live in and we walk in, whether it's in the United States or here in Israel or any place, and we're followers of Yeshua, indeed, we want to be lights of the world. We want to be those menorahs. We want to be his people to bring Jesus. And his name is Yeshua, which means salvation. To bring the salvation of God, to bring Yeshua as to all the nations on the earth. And that is our prayer, that is our hope as we take a look at the ruins here at Afek. Shalom.